So if you've been airbrushing and then you let go of the trigger and this happens, you can see the air is staying on. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that issue. First thing we need to do is clean out the airbrush. So I'm just going to tip my paint back. Then using the cleaning station, I'm just going to clean it out. I'm not going to show you the entire process. What I'll do is I'll link to another video that shows you how to clean your airbrush in the description below. So once your airbrush is clean, detach it from the air source. I'm going to go ahead and remove this male part of the quick connect as this is the area that I need to get to to fix the sticky trigger. I'm also going to be using the Awada maintenance kit. It comes with some really handy tools. And the tool that I'm going to need is this particular one here. I'm also going to be using some Q-tips. Just be wary, and I'll explain that later as well, that we want to make sure that none of that fluff gets caught up in that plunger assembly section. Otherwise, we're going to have the same sticky trigger issue later. And the denture brushes are also nice and handy. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as well. And the Awada cleaning mat just so that when I pull everything apart, my parts are not going to roll away. And you can see this one gets used all the time. This is what it would look like if it was brand new. The good thing with the cleaning mat is you've also got a nice cutaway diagram of the airbrush. And this is where we want to get to the air valve set in here. Because this one's so trashed, I'm going to not use that but instead work on the bench here so that you can see all the parts clearly. First thing, remove the handle and we need to remove that needle. So with the needle chucking nut, which is this here, you only have to loosen it. You don't have to totally unscrew it to remove that needle. You can decide to remove all of the spring guide and rocker assembly. However, now that the needle's out, I'm able to just remove that trigger because you can see the gap there. That's where the needle sits through. So that's why you have to remove that needle in order to get to the trigger. Another thing to note, this is more when I put it back together that notch that you see on the trigger that goes towards the back of the airbrush and the trickiest thing is you need to line this thing up and you can see that hole in there you can just make it out so that's where that lower dangly bit from the trigger needs to sit back into so it's this piece here so this side here has the generic size tool to remove the air valve set however with the eclipse you need to use the larger one this is why you're going to need this particular a wider tool if you do have an eclipse rather than the standard cheap version that you can get anywhere on Amazon so this one won't fit. You can also use tweezers that works as well. So what you want to do is these two prongs need to go into those two notches and then carefully unwind it and it will hold on to that little piece and now tipping it into my hand so I would normally do this on the mat but you can see we've got the spring and now we need this part here which is what's just dropped out of the airbrush and it fits back into your airbrush that way with the spring on that lower section. Tiny parts but this is the main thing that I need to clean, even though it doesn't look that dirty. So it'll have little bits of dirt or grime on there and that's stopping that trigger from bouncing back up. So I'm gonna give it a clean now. So if you're using water-based paints, I like to give it a bit of a clean with some glass cleaner. Get the one with the ammonia in it as that will help to clean any of the surfaces. And I like to just spray a couple of times on the end of the cotton bud and then give it a clean like so. Spin it around, do the same. And then I'll get the other end, which is the dry end, just dry it off. And while you've got the other pieces removed, give them a bit of a clean as well. Be careful with the fibers. So you can do the same with this little denture brush. Get it nice and soaked in that Windex the glass cleaner. You can also use your thinners, as in the reducer that you may use to thin your water-based paint. If you're using automotive paint, well then you're gonna have to use gun wash or a two-pack thinner to clean it. Gun wash will be a lot more cost effective. With the denture brush, not so much with the cotton bud, I like to get into here, and that's because this isn't gonna leave any fluff. So these also come in the Awada cleaning kit. So I'm just pulling back on that rocker assembly in order to get in there. You can really see that little hole in there now. Give it a good clean. You may find it easier to remove this entire section. Again, I'll pop a link in the description to a video showing you how to pull apart the entire airbrush. So the last thing I want to do is clean the trigger as well. Just get into all those areas, make sure it's completely clean. And with the spring, you can do the same thing, but generally they don't get that dirty. So now that I'm satisfied that the trigger, the spring, the air piston, and the little locking nut are all nice and clean, I can reassemble the airbrush. What I want to do for First is grabbing that air piston, I just want to slide the spring on there carefully and then drop it back into the base of the airbrush, like so. And then making sure the locking nut's back on the tool so you don't drop it, just press down on it. There'll be a bit of resistance. 
just wind that in until it's tight and just doing that clockwise. Now the tricky part, just drop that trigger back in, have the notch towards the back of the airbrush, line up the dangly bit with the hole, It'll take a couple of goes and just drop it straight in like that and you should feel action. If you press down and it doesn't move, that means that it hasn't gone into that hole correctly. It's probably folded over. Now this here you can wind in and that's gonna tighten your throw because it's tightening up that spring or you can wind it out to make it looser. I kind of like it somewhere in between, not too tight, not too loose, and then reinsert the needle, do this carefully until it seats. So you just press it firmly, but don't sort of jam it. So once it's firm, tighten the locking nut and then make sure you've got action. If you forget to tighten this and you just go like that, you can see the locking nut now isn't moving the needle and then what will happen is you'll put paint in and you'll think you're ready to airbrush, you'll be pulling back and no paint will come out. So whenever you remove that needle you need to re-tighten the locking nut, very important and always check that it's moving back and forth. Put the handle back on and it already feels a lot better. Let's hook it up, put some paint in it and see if I fix the problem. It's going to refit the quick connect. With airbrushes as well, just keep in mind, I just do everything finger tight. You don't need to use any sort of multi-grips to tighten up all the little bits and pieces. Finger tight works fine. And I can already tell that's totally fixed the issue. Putting some paint in the brush. See, I'm painting away, I let go. And it works perfectly. So you can see, air on, let go. So the trigger returns, no problem at all, no more sticking, and now I can use correct double action when I'm airbrushing, keeping that air pressed down at all times, and just pulling back for paint. So I hope that's helped all of you who have had that frustrating problem of the air staying on when you're trying to airbrush. If you wanna fast track your airbrushing, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com or you can continue learning by watching more of our videos, some of which are listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.